In this video I'll provide an overview of workflows for daylight analysis and optimization using four main tools. You could check in combination with Radiance and Daysim and 3ds Max Design. And I want to take a look at how we can measure and optimize distribution, what kind of quality we are looking for, what kind of quantity are we looking for. In this video I'll provide an overview of daylight analysis and daylight optimization using EcoCheck Analysis in combination with Radiance and Dacium and 3ds Max Design. Let's start out in EcoCheck Analysis looking at this very cool project from Henning Larsen. Talking about daylight optimization I think that we're really talking about enhanced understanding of the concept that we implement and the opportunity to try out and test different designs to do design comparisons. With Inside EcoCheck we can really look at the quantity in relation to form, self-shading, facade, physical context, but it's not very quanti qualitative to look at the daylight or to measure the daylight with Inside EcoCheck. To do that we can use EcoCheck in combination with Radiance and create a daylight visualization where we can overlay data to look at the comfort of the inside space and examine other sky conditions than the overcast sky used in EcoCheck. So because in the summer periods or more extreme periods we will have more light coming into the building than just an, an overcast normal day. So to really get some more hardcore data we can then also export the model to DASIM that really give us this great report examine the daylight factor on the different grid values and things like daylight autonomy and the useful daylight indicator which shows us where we will have reasonable or useful amount of daylight and that's really between 100 to 2000 lux. Are we above 2000 lux we will have possibility to have discomfort with inside the space. If we look just short back to Autodesk Revit, some really cool features has been implemented here that allows us to create an energy model based on different designs and really effectively export that into EcoCheck analysis for doing quick test out of the form and self-shading and physical context of a building. But when we move on, working with a real BIM model, let's turn this off, really we need some more interoperability and that's where 3ds Max is really effective because it's really easy and fast to import the model into 3ds Max. With inside 3ds Max we can do a daylight visualization as we can see in Radiance and we can overlay data on this picture and we can also look at, at of course shadows and stuff like that and we can also put us out a grid that we can use for simulating uh, daylight factors and the lux values for uh, illumination. So that's really the workflow that I could recommend here is to use EcoCheck for looking at the quantity, Radiance for looking at the quality and DASIM for the evaluation and validation of the quality and quantity of light with inside our space or building. And then when we move on working with a real model we can really effectively apply 3ds Max design for evaluating again and this point here we will have implemented the right shading devices and stuff like that. Just remember here that EcoCheck is really using an overcast sky condition which means that orientation won't be taken into account. And that's why we need tools like Radiance to look at in this case here a sun extreme during the summer and it's really helpful as well to have DASIM where we have some more valid simulations and we get some, some output data that we can use to calculate how much we can use and what are the energy savings within inside our design. And then at the end 3ds Max for working with the, the real constructions and products implementing shading devices and stuff like that. So this is really the, the workflow that is efficient to, to uh, implement using these four applications.